Michael Herzog, uh, Israeli Brigadier General, retired and international fellow at the Washington Institute. Thank you for joining Voice of America's Persian service here in Tel Aviv. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, I'd like to start by asking you about uh, Iran's involvement in Syria. How successful would you say Iran has been in uh, establishing itself militarily and economically in Syria? Iran is, uh, Iran's involvement in Syria has been very deep in uh, recent years. Uh, essentially what Iran has been trying to do is to fill the void created by years of turmoil and war in Syria and the Middle East, the uh, rise and fall of ISIS, and they wanted to fill the void and establish themselves as a, a dominant actor in the heart of the Middle East, spanning from Mesopotamia to uh, through the Levant to the Mediterranean, coupled with the establishment of a formidable uh, military front facing Israel in Syria, joining the one that already exists in Lebanon. And I would say um, uh, several years on, uh, most of the Iranian initial uh, very ambitious, uh, ambitious plans were thwarted mostly by Israeli military activities, uh, some by Russian activities and others. Uh, but Iran is still there, still very active, invests a lot, has not given up on its uh, ambitions and uh, makes as much an effort as possible. Uh, many in Israel wonder why Iran is investing so heavily uh, in a country which is uh, far away, you know, 2,000 kilometers far away. And why do you and, think that and is? And I think it's part of uh, their ideology. Um, for them, uh, defending Iran starts uh, far away, not the Iranian borders. But I think that is coupled also with deep ideological hostility towards the state of Israel. And they've been trying to encircle us with uh, military France in Lebanon, in Syria, in Gaza. Uh, and uh, with modest success, I would say. How effective do you think Israel's uh, policy of countering and trying to push back the Iranian presence in Syria has been? I think it has been quite uh, effective. Uh, as I said, most of the Iranian initial plans were thwarted. Uh, they don't have a naval base in Syria. They do not have an air base in Syria. They don't have planes in Syria, they have some drones, they don't have 100,000 uh, uh, proxy militias deployed there. So most of it was uh, thwarted. The Israeli idea was to uh, um, employ uh, military measures, but in a way that does not escalate to a, a war between us and them. Um, so uh, until now, Israel's pushback has been uh, quite uh, successful, but it's not a given that uh, it will be successful forever. Uh, why do you think uh, Iran uh, has not responded to these repeated uh, Israeli uh, military strikes in Syria with uh, a more kind of aggressive uh, retaliation against Israel? First, they tried to respond several times with uh, very measured uh, military activities. Uh, they sent an armed drone from Syria to Israel, which was uh, shot down. They fired 32 rockets uh, from Syria to the Golan Heights. Only four crossed the line and were intercepted. And uh, in January of this year, they fired uh, a rocket towards the northern part of the Golan Heights, which is also uh, intercepted. And this was the first time that Israel and Iran directly traded military blows. It was always Israel and Iranian proxies, but now it's Israel and Iran uh, itself. But I think. Uh, Iran is, uh, finds itself uh, in a situation where Israel enjoys both operational and, and intelligence superiority in Syria, and they know it. They stand a lot to lose. They are under heavy pressure as well, also economically back home. And I think uh, they are deterred. They, they realize that uh, if they escalate, uh, they stand more to lose than to win. So their, their response has been uh, quite measured. Well, you recently wrote about uh, the U.S. military presence in Syria and how uh, Israeli officials uh, were concerned that uh, President Trump would uh, withdraw all U.S. forces from there. The president has now said a small contingent will remain. Uh, how credible uh, a presence do you think uh, that small contingent will be uh, in Syria of U.S. troops? And what kind of message would it, would it send to Iran? There was concern uh, in Israel about uh, Trump's announcement of uh, exiting Syria. 
Uh, I think more than the practical uh, implication of this, it was the symbolism or the, the buzz in the region as if the U.S. is uh, retreating from, from this region, which is a source of concern to Israel and to others in the region uh, as well. And now we see that um, uh, the, the U.S. administration decided uh, not to pull out everybody and leave uh, some forces both in the northern uh, Kurdish area and in al Tanf base, which is situated on the triangular border area between Syria, Jordan and Iraq. And I think that was done, uh, our government also pleaded with the U.S. administration not to pull the forces out of these areas because uh, if you do, you create a void which will be filled by the Iranians. Uh, I think we're in a better place right now, but as I said earlier, uh, when it comes to the Iranian military deployment in Syria, Israel uh, is taking the necessary military action, not the U.S. Well, Israel also has been trying to enlist uh, Russian support to curb Iranian uh, expansion of its presence in Syria. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was just uh, recently in Moscow to meet uh, President Putin. Um, how do you see that uh, Israeli-Russian cooperation proceeding in the future? Since Russia deployed in Syria in, uh, militarily in, uh, in late 2015, our leadership developed uh, a good working relationship with the Russian leadership and also a uh, deconfliction mechanism between the Israeli army and the Russian army in Syria which has been mostly um, effective. We had some uh, clashes and incidents. Uh, most noteworthy was the uh, downing of a Russian plane in September of last year by Syrian air defense, where the Russians put the blame on Israel. But by and large, I think uh, we have good rela working relations. I think our leadership uh, rightly identified that while uh, Russia and Iran have some converging interests, they also have some diverging interests in, uh, when it comes to Syria. I don't think the Russians want Syria to become an Iranian protectorate. I do not think that the Russians want Iran to drag uh, Syria uh, into war with Israel or open another war. It could undermine their own uh, polit the political solution they've been trying to broker uh, in Syria. And by and large, if you look at the history of the last few years, Russia generally gave Israel a free hand or freedom of action to act against Iranian military targets in Syria. And that tells you uh, a lot. Russia is trying to navigate play between Israel and Iran. I'm not sure it can succeed for long in averting a clash between these two determined actors facing each other. But, uh, but for now, I would say um, Israel has, by and large, uh, understandings with Russia about the contours of what we might or might not do in Syria. Iran uh, is uh, also under pressure from uh, the U.S. economically, with uh, sanctions having been uh, increased in the last uh, couple of months. Where do you see this uh, strategy going from the Trump administration to uh, exert what they call maximum pressure on Iran? First, I think uh, that uh, the U.S. Uh, sanctions are having an impact. You, I, I believe that uh, every way, any way you look at it from, uh, in economic uh, terms, it does have an impact on the Iranian uh, economy. The Iranians are paying a heavy toll. And the Europeans who have been trying to uh, save the JCPOA and do business with Iran uh, are facing a reality where the big companies are pulling out. Now you, now you have to ask, uh, what is the goal of the U.S. sanctions? Uh, one potential goal is uh, regime change, even though the administration denies uh, that this is the goal. Maybe, maybe not, but I don't think any of us can speculate whether or not uh, the, uh, the economic difficulties and hardships will really lead to regime change in the foreseeable future. I think this is impossible to, uh, to predict. Uh, second uh, potential goal is, uh, and this is a stated goal by the US, is to bring Iran back to the table to renegotiate a nuclear deal on better terms for uh, for the West, uh, and I think uh, that is unlikely in the uh, 
foreseeable future uh, because I think uh, Iran will go a very long way before it goes back to the table and gives up what it got in the JCPOA. In any case, the Iranian regime seems to be hoping that uh, the next administration, the next U.S. administration, will navigate the U.S. back to the JCPOA. So all they have to do in their mind is uh, wait out Trump. But there could be a third goal to uh, pressure on Iran, which is to push back against uh, Iranian uh, destabilizing activities in the region. And I think uh, Iran is under pressure. Israel is pressuring Iran in Syria, others in uh, other parts of uh, the Middle East. And that, I think, is a valid goal. I, I also note that in Iran itself, um, there is a lot of criticism on the regime for having invested billions of dollars in Syria, in Lebanon, in Gaza, rather than in Iran itself. And I think this is a valid question that the regime has to answer. How come you have invested billions of dollars at the expense of your own populace? Well, um, many Iranians uh, in recent protests have been bringing that up. Um, how likely is it that this domestic criticism uh, is actually going to make a difference in the practical support Iran is giving to its proxies around the region? Well, uh, from pieces of evidence that uh, I've heard uh, from uh, governmental sources, both in the U.S. and here in Israel, it seems to have uh, some impact. I wouldn't, uh, you know, blow it out of proportion, uh, but it does have some. Certainly, it's something that the Iranian regime has to consider because uh, there were Iranians there who went back home, uh, who went back home either wounded uh, or in coffins. And Iranians have been asking questions about that. So I think that definitely uh, has become uh, something that they have to consider. And there's also evidence that because of these sanctions, Iran uh, cut some of its funding uh, to its allies, to its proxies, like Hezbollah, like Hamas in Gaza and others. And I believe some of it is probably due to the heavy pressure of sanctions on Iran. Michael Herzog, thank you very much. Thank you.